All right, we're live. Hello there. Welcome to the first episode of the Draw or Die podcast. I am DJ Kaufman. I've been a professional uh, artist and illustrator for 27 years now. I'm joined by my co-host, my co-pilot, uh, my wife, Alicia, who's helping running this thing and uh, helping me stay on task so I don't sh chase shiny objects around the internet. And um, yeah, just to kick off, you know, Draw or Die's mission is really simple. Uh, we want to help artists out there stay encouraged and motivate you to draw and create every day. Um, most especially because for the mass, the vast majority of artists that I talk to, they don't really have a great support structure around them. Um, they're feeling kind of stuck in some way. And this happens on just about every level um, from beginner to, you know, award-winning artists that I know. So we're going to dive deep into some of these thoughts on this topic together. And with a little bit of luck, we're going to feel uh, a bit better and energized and get out there and bring more awesome uh, things into the world uh, from our bare hands, right? Drawing. And uh, so this is how this is going to work, this show. Um, I'm going to go through this week's topics and I'll probably be drawing something here live as well and kind of looking through some things together. And um, let's see here. Let's see. I'll sketch along and you listen live and then let's just keep each other company for a little while. So if you have questions, you can drop them in the chat or the comments and Alicia will be sure that I tackle them probably on the half of the hour or something like that. And uh, if you're catching the replay, you can always post uh, your comments and questions in or email us and we will talk about them in the next episode in the uh, next question and answer uh, round. Does that sound good? You ready? Sounds good to me. All right. Okay, so I'm going to kick it off real quick with the draw or die origin story because I've had a couple people ask me, and just in my personal life, they see what I'm doing here with uh, draw or die on the side and they're wondering how did this come to be? Um, so I just want to talk a little bit about my personal journey um, and what the heck this whole thing is. Um, so I was kind of feeling a bit lost and listless myself. Uh, I've been drawing things for a long time with a lot of successes and a lot of failures. And, you know, at times things like my day job, you know, would take over my life. Um, it started to kind of feel like, what the heck am I doing? You know, why am I continuously working on these things? And does anybody really care? So just having my own self doubts for many, many years, actually behind the scenes, but on the outside, I was always looking very uh, confident and like I had my shit together pretty much. And um, it wasn't the case. So a lot of artists are dealing with this where they put on this mask on the outside and really on the inside, they're feeling like freaked out. Right. So um, especially during the pandemic, uh, you would think that for artists, that was like the dream. A lot of my artist friends like uh, Mikey Wood and the guys from Pittsburgh were like, hey, maybe this isn't so bad. You know, we can sit inside all day and draw comics all day. And really what happened to me was I started to feel some sort of, you know, just general anxiety. I was even quietly dealing with like weird panic attacks where I just felt like, wanting to get away or something, you know, and just generally this idea of kind of feeling stuck. But on the outside, I was still kind of, I guess, portraying that I had my shit together. Like everything was fine. Everything was cool. Like here's my projects, everything's going on. But inside I was just like really freaking out. So long story short there, I had to do some like really deep um, soul searching for myself and I really just started to get down to the heart of the matter. What was I really afraid of? What, what was really affecting me? Um, and when I wasn't able to draw, I just kind of felt dead inside. So like the days where my day job was taking over or when projects were kind of falling apart or just when I just got so busy with other things and I couldn't create, I just kind of felt, yeah, like a walking zombie kind of. So and for me, deep down, it kind of felt like I need to draw or I feel dead, draw or die, right? So um, I'd say like, this, you know, uh, Alicia had a first hand for this, but on the days when I wouldn't be able to draw, I would just get really highly irritable. 
uh, she could probably attest to some of those days, right? I guess. You guess? Mm -hmm. Kind of cranky, moping around, what's wrong with you, that kind of stuff. And uh, it, it really boiled down to I wasn't able to express myself through art. And many of the artists that I know or I was talking to at the time had just quit and they just gave up. And they were looking to me saying, like, how are you keeping your stuff together and looking to me for motivation? So I thought, well, I can keep giving them advice, but I'm not being honest with myself. I'm not taking my own advice. So I started to take my own advice. Um, the, 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 the exercises that are in, like, defeatthefunk.com, the scribble challenge, easy things like that, I would just tell people, do these things. This will help get you moving again. And... It worked for me. And so I just started sharing that freely with my friends. Um, I also learned over that period of time to kind of say no to projects that weren't really fitting my personal pillars anymore. I didn't want to draw um, projects just for a paycheck that weren't really like, I don't want to be the this guy. You know, I don't want to be the superhero artist or I don't want to be the guy that draws wrestling comics. Like just something didn't feel right about it anymore. So I was really learning to say no, and it kind of felt good. And it freed me up to do more of what I love and the stuff for my personal uh, brands. Um, and at some point, you know, I took some like coaching and counseling and stuff like that, just to kind of see like from another third party, someone that I don't know, um, to see what, how that was going. So, um, and in the end, we came up with draw or die. And it's like, I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to put out this weekly newsletter. And we did that. I've done that for 31 weeks now. I think we're on week 32 this weekend. Um, now it's up to 1,700 subscribers. Um, it sparked so many great conversations with other artists. And I had no idea that there were so many other. I mean, I kind of did, but I don't think that I had really any idea just how many artists were dealing with the same feelings inside and maybe just afraid to talk about it. Um, so yeah, we're at 1,700 plus subscribers as of, as of today. It's all pretty much organic. It's just me posting it on Instagram and kind of word of mouth. And um, it really fills me with a ton of uh, gratitude to know that I'm saying and encouraging other artists out there who are getting unstuck and just getting re-energized to create. Um, and that's what I really want everyone to know in the club itself, in the Draw or Die club, is that it's a two-way street. Um, all of the club members' messages that, like, really fuels me and keeps me going on days where I'm just not, you know, invulnerable, you know. Um, they seem to come on your kind of worst days. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah they, they, they do come on, like, the worst days, for sure, if I'm having a... Yeah, uh, instantly, instantly lifts you up. Yeah, I could be having the, the trashiest of days for whatever reason, personal stuff, work stuff. And then I get home and it's like, OK, it's time to it's time to draw. You know, it's time to get going. So uh, real quick, an example of that would be like in week 10. I had a topic about that where life just threw me a bunch of curveballs that week. And it really kind of felt like the game plan was off and I failed. So I think the newsletter that week was pretty much like, hey, guys, listen, I failed, too. I'm not. I'm not perfect at this. And there was an artist named Tom Romano who reminded me that, you know, failure isn't like failure isn't fatal. Right. And um, uh, not to listen to those self doubts in your head. And I kind of, you know, these things, you just don't, you don't apply them. So just hearing that from other artists and bouncing it back to me, uh, was really cool. There was another artist named Dan Miller who uh, really inspired me by telling me that he did the scribble challenge and then he hadn't drawn he drew more in two weeks than he had in 10 years. And I just was like, I can't even imagine not drawing it for 10 years and then picking up a pencil and starting to go again. So um, that's just truly amazing. And it's, it's really what keeps me going with this. And uh, yeah, I just really enjoy it. I think it's really like uh, a calling of some kind. Like I, I really, I really enjoy talking to other artists. I didn't think that I would, kind of struggled with that privately a little bit. Like, I don't want to be a teacher. I'm not a teacher. Uh, I'm not a how to draw better guy. You know, I'm not an art teacher, right? I can't really do. <laughs> I'm not patient enough to be an art teacher, but 
Um, <clears throat> many of my friends would say that when I would come into a room, you know, I would be encouraging them. So um, I kind of just had to embrace that a little bit. <clears throat> and yeah, along the way here, we've had so many comments just in the past few weeks, especially saying, will you do a podcast? Because we just want to hear more of you talking beyond the reels and stuff like that. So we can listen in and kind of be inspired. So that's what this is. So here it is. Here we are with the podcast. Um, Travis says, thanks so much for all you do. I've drawn more in this past month than I have in years. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. That's so awesome, Travis. Uh, that's yeah. We'll get into the Promptober stuff. That's probably a good segue into the Promptober. So uh, yeah, that's another thing that we tried to do. Um, <clears throat> Promptober is our uh, Draw or Die Club October drawing challenge. Just to explain a little bit of what that is to people that maybe don't know. It's our version of like an Inktober. Um, uh, let's see here. I think I've got, I won't share that yet. Um, so yeah, it's just the daily drawing prompts. They're a little bit different. I kind of did them a little different. We had some people saying they didn't want to do Inktober for various reasons. And um, and so I thought, well, let's just try this. And originally what I was going to do, uh, well, let's just let's just reverse that. Yeah, this is a challenge. There's prompts every day, just like Inktober. They're a little bit different, a little more fun, I think. And at the end of it, to put some icing on the, the cake, we got awesome prizes from like amazing sponsors. That's one of the things I forgot to pull up actually was the, uh, the, the drawer die, the promptober.com. I'm going to do that really quickly. Promptober.com. Cause I just want to say thank you to all of the amazing sponsors that we got here. So as I'm talking, maybe make that a little bit bigger. There we go. So yeah, we draw the prompts in October. We get through them. You can see they're kind of like story prompts, like the dead are alive or creepy and crawly. And a lot of people commented that's what they picked it for instead of Inktober that was just a word. Yeah. And so at some point I thought I'm going to reach out to Canvas Lamp because it's the lamp that I use to do my down shots. And I just asked them, hey, will you, um, you know, donate something? And I didn't hear back from them, actually. Um, so I was like, oh, bummer. I'll just buy it. I'll buy the lamp myself and give it away. Um, but then they did get back. But then they did get back yeah. to us. Yeah, because I think I think after they saw all the other great sponsors, like we, we reached out to probably seven or eight. Yeah, but they were having a supply chain issue, too. So it yeah, that. yeah, it was definitely they're doing the shutter clicker and the upgraded base. Yeah. So now they're they're giving away that, too. So it's great. Yeah, it did work out. Um, Makers Cabinet. They make these awesome uh uh, circle circle makers i guess you would call it or a compass it's not, not really a compass. compass it's a way to draw circles um <laughs> so, you know what that's called put it in the comments yeah right <laughs> it's it's skipping my <laughs> it's giving my mind right now uh the hoovel that's uh you know hey it's a awesome brass uh pencil plane. pencil plane yeah it's not a pencil sharpener um the wallet that i use for the uh a lot of the scribble challenges I did on TikTok and Instagram, we just, everybody asked me like, where do you get this cool little notebook? So I reached out to Dango and said, Hey, will you donate one? And I think they were the first to respond. They were the first one to respond. Yeah. So um, one of, one of the ones I was most excited about is Blackwing pencils because I love Blackwing pencils. I love all their products. Um, that's cool. So thank you, Blackwing. We got a lot of cool, uh, we got a pack of pencils, sketchbook, all that stuff. Yeah, just check out Promptober.com. I'll put it in the show notes too. Uh, Sapien Stone. So I collect a lot of coins. I, I have that in the uh, one of the uh, weekly newsletters talks about how I use coins to kind of deal with my own like fidgeting anxiety and stuff like that. And yeah, JL Lawson Company makes some of the best uh, EDC coins out there. Field Notes, another one of my favorite brands. <laughs> I use Field Notes all the time. Usually, Everyday Carry, uh, super awesome brand. Uh, some more Blackwing pencils. This is the Image Comics edition. And then another exciting one was Sketchboard Pro. Reached out to them and just said, hey, this is what we're doing. We're trying to encourage artists all month. And Sketchboard Pro said, of course, yeah, we're in. So I am super excited and stoked for all of these prizes. And um, 
I guess we maybe talk a little bit about initially we wanted to do props tober and that kind of fell off. And it was just this idea that in October, you wouldn't know it, but about 80% of artists quit and don't pick up a pencil again. We talked, I talked to probably four or five club members who said they hadn't drawn anything since last October when they tried to do uh, last inktober, they failed and they just felt like, Oh man, I, I suck. Um, so what I thought was, well, maybe this is a good time for the club members to kind of get out there and encourage some other artists and kind of just pass that good feeling around. Right. And so that was the original idea, but then people started asking us, well, where's your drawing prompts? And I'm like, well, I didn't want to do a drawing challenge. And then we just kind of decided to do it kind of last minute. I think within a weekend, we put that together, kind of came up with the prompts, reached out to the sponsors and then prompt over just kind of happened. Um, and now we're at probably over 3000 drawings on Instagram for the month. So there's thousands of drawings out there. There's, there's also what on TikTok. Lots of TikTok, yeah. um, some Twitter and <clears throat> neither of us use Snapchat. So who knows? Yeah, I'm not on Snapchat. I only have so much time in the day. So, um, yeah. And shout out, like we could do some shout outs here. Maybe we just kind of look through some of these drawtober uh, drawings. I'm going to go ahead and pull that up. And first shout out is to, you got to pull that up there. Nope. Coming up. Okay. Go, go bigger. Go bigger with this. Yeah, there we go. So shout out to Magical Creatures, Jason. I know he's listening in because he was the first person to comment. But not only is your art amazing, dude. Um, this was the first. I think he launched this Instagram just for this um challenge and just really amazing pencil work here i mean <laughs> you're like the the creepy or the what was this the scary doll or the creepy doll it's, a, like it's a, one scary doll uh, garbage pal kid yeah okay. um but he's also been going around and every time i log in and check the hashtag he's on every single post encouraging the other artists not only that but before i can get there so yeah. i generally do rounds commenting and liking the drawings and seeing all the great posts everyone puts up and i don't know <laughs> if i have beaten him to a single drawing yeah it's awesome like this is really good stuff again this kind of really energizes me because honestly i look at all these other drawings and i'm like wow you guys are just killing it with these so we're gonna just kind of look through it and, and please i know that there are hundreds of artists these are just ones that stuck out to us we'll look at maybe some more next week i mean there's Probably. I have like 25 uh, new favorite artists. So, yeah, we... I mean, there's so <laughs> many. And we also sit around and talk about, can we afford to commission them yeah. for like their own art or like, you know, prints or something like that? So let's take a look at a couple more. Here's Rich Trask. That's one.mans.trask on Instagram if you're just listening on audio. Um, and again, just amazing like penmanship here. It's a really fun style. Yeah, man. That's right. His mom passed away. That was just kind of tore, tore our heart out that night. We saw that. It's amazing, dude. Amazing tribute. I mean, not only that, I really like what I like about this is the monochrome, like the two tone color scheme that, that Trask does here. I really like that stuff. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this was, oh my God. I want this one as a print somewhere. Like, this is awesome. I was like, there's so much going on storytelling in this one. It's just amazing. All right. Okay. Enough, enough with you, Rich Trask. All right. Here we have Dark Arts underscore by Racine. Racine Victoria. What, what would you say about that? I really like this style. What do you think? I like that every time she shows up in my feed, I know it's going to be her. Yeah. Without seeing the name yeah like even the ones that aren't the long kind of drawn out bodies i can still tell it's it's gonna be right oh man that's so good yeah yeah wow this is so awesome i just want to like i don't want it i don't want it to end i don't want the month to end all right let's see who's next here we'll spend a little time going through these because it's worth it there's so much awesome artwork happening here so we have uh Dr. Dot T. Dot Neil, that's Travis and Herman at Dr. T. Neil. 
wait, at doctor dot T dot well, don't right? say doctor, say DR. <sighs> okay. For those listening, it's at DR dot T dot Neil. We can add these to the show notes. Yeah, I'll add them to the show notes. All right. That's fine. Uh, again, I'm gonna skip, I'm gonna skip back here to, to where he started. <laughs> so yeah, awesome. There's his headless horseman. That was number one. So yeah, really good, really awesome stuff. You're gonna hear me say awesome a lot probably in this. In the van with the ring. That one. That was really, really good. Oh yeah, where was that one at? Oh, right here. Yeah, that's really fun. Hopefully you sell these. Is it a VW? I think it's a VW. Uh, it doesn't look like a VW. No, because VWs don't have the front like that. But hey, okay, all right, awesome, Matthew. Oh, oh God, we got to talk about Matthew Rice here. Um, <laughs> we think we know what he's up to, but I'm going to scroll back here to the beginning. Um. Which is really funny because Facebook flagged this and took it down. Encouraging self harm, apparently. Yeah, they said we were. Don't harm yourself. Yeah, please don't harm yourselves. This is not encouraging self harm, but really rad. Uh, We think. He said there's a theme. There's a theme, and we think it's a parade. I did think it was a parade, but now I think it might be a whole whole festival because of the. There's one that looks like a bounce house. Yeah, these are floats in a parade. Well, you can't take a bounce house down a parade, so now I don't know. <laughs> All right. Yeah, man. Jeez. Oh, it's an awesome Hellboy there. Maybe he didn't have a bounce house. What was the name of it? I don't know, but that's... That's... <sighs> yeah. I mean, I could look at every single one of these. We, we don't cut the whole yeah, yeah, yeah. hour. All right. Here we have at Breed Menti. I'm going to say her name is Brie Dementi, right? Oh, oh, yeah. Brie Dementi, I'm going to say. Again, what do you have to say about this one, Alicia? Uh, so she has a, a little recurring character group here. Um, the one that really caught my eye was these um, parasites having dinner uh, up the red. Up here. There you go. Um, and then I, I kind of started coming back to her stuff a lot. And the next one over um, is this party that kind of starts this saga with the vampire and the skeleton <laughs> and the ghost and the detail in this yeah um with yeah. the the beer in the stomach of the ghost oh my god i didn't even see that yeah. it, there's definitely a lot happening here jeez um and then we get to see them a few more times throughout the month yeah okay all right we'll skip so that, that critters the, they both did critters she did critters and um uh-huh. one just before did critters yeah so. that's cool that's a nightmare right there. Yeah, those are great. Oh, my gosh. All right. Here's my old friend Joe Dunn. I, and we think we know what he's up to as well. Mm-hmm. He's up to some stuff here. You can see that he has quite a theme going on. And I don't know. If, like, before he started the month, it was a Sandman. And so I don't know if anybody's seen Sandman. I don't want to spoil it. Do you want to explain? Well, there's a, a fight uh, between... What's his name? Mor- Lucifer. Morpheus. Uh, Morpheus and Morpheus. Luc- yeah. Morpheus. Sorry, yeah. I didn't yeah. um, But this is a, <laughs> a <laughs> prompt inspired choice of um, what do they call it? The battle people that they choose. Um, yeah, like a Pokemon kind of thing, but no, not not Pokemon. <laughs> not Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, like a, a Avatar. Or something, right? I don't like, think Neil would like it. If he like, I am the knight. I, mm-hmm. you know, you cannot see. I crush you. And then, like, the other person casts a thing. And, yeah. I don't know what it's called either. but It's awesome. It's awesome. That's all you need to know. And, uh, yeah, Joe's been at this game for a long time. Check out uh, at Joe Rules. And here we have Dorian, uh, Dorian Etter. At Dorian Edder. And the thing that kicked off for me about her was that she's drawing in these t- in the tiny notebooks. And she's got videos for each one of these. I won't play them. But uh, let me stop here real quick. On oh, I guess it's kind of hard to see what she was doing outside of. I guess I have to play a video. I'm going to play one real quick. 
I just say her background sounds are on point. Uh, yeah, I can't play it. Yeah. So definitely, definitely visit her Instagram, uh, her reels. Good, good music choices. Yeah, I kind of want to just buy her notebook. Oh, this was a this was a good one. I like what she did here with the coins and removing them. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at that real quick. Just to show how tiny that sketchbook is. You know. And that was her skeleton soldier prop day. So yeah, amazing. Again, so so good, so good. What do we have here? Uh, this is Charlando, so another old friend of mine, Char Charlie James. <laughs> oh, I think I see what he did there with the, with the prompt. There's oh, this definitely a theme. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you could guess the theme that's going on in uh, Charlando's stuff, but that's his headless horseman. So yeah, definitely check out at Charlando for his. Uh, oh, he's he's on and he he's says, on. Hey, hey, man. <laughs> Yeah, every time at night, I'm like, I wonder what he's going to do tomorrow. That, that's what, like, especially this one with the grave, digging a grave. Um, cool. Awesome work, man. Let's see, we got a few more. I thought I'm going to celebrate these a little bit because it's been such an awesome, just an awesome month. And, okay, here we go. Samuel Farinato. And we really love his stuff, but Alicia goes on, like she just sits on the couch and is like, look at this cute little skeleton, you know. And a giant furry skeleton and a flaming skeleton. And... Yeah. Yeah. You you were geeking out on his soldier too. I think that might be your favorite prompt. Well, let's not pick favorites. I can't say. No, 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 no. The skeleton soldier. You showed Which me more one? of those. Oh, this one. Yeah. Lots of people. Yeah. I liked what he was doing here with the coloring and the, the stylistic, you know, quick quick look there i like that all right cool let's go through a little quicker now fraggle fraggle effects uh she, i was following her on tiktok and again she does some really cool um uh reels and tiktoks for her uh process drawings it's not coming through really great on there. that's good enough that's cool yep i didn't see that one before yeah, so she's Fraggle FX on uh, TikTok and um, Instagram. Here we have Dold, Dold Design, Dold Dot Designs. Again, awesome Undertaker. Here's his uh, skeleton soldier. It's like peace. Yeah, it's cool that I can kind of kind of guess guess some of the prompts that were going on here. Check out Dold. Oh, yeah. Gary Logan. <laughs> uh, Gary Logan is an awesome artist. This is one of the guys that we were like, I wonder how much his commissions are. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And he actually got busy with life, he says, right? In this one. And he started doing the like once a week updates with his prompts for the week, right? But again, we just really like his style and his color. It's like really poppy. Definitely worth checking him out. Who else do we got here? I only have a couple more, just one more. Rocky Phillips. Again, he's been staying at it always, always on time, I think. Did he stop or did he? Let's see. No, this was his Grimmest Reaper here, right? Promptober 25 of 31. And then he's a drawer diet, right? I think I said, no, 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 never mind. Yeah, I said that for the drawer diet club members was to hide a smiley face inside the uh, drawing. So that's why you might've seen some of the uh, smiley faces on the Grim Reapers, kind of like an inside, uh, inside thing there. So yeah, that's Promptober. And I did not post mine today, but I am in the middle of drawing um, this guy. So today's is that this clown isn't funny or this clown ain't funny. So I did a gesture. I saw some other gestures uh, happening there. So I'll probably start inking this up during the, uh, the question answer round. But before we get into that, I thought I would talk about uh, the feedback that we got from the last week's um, week 31's newsletter. Uh, just talk a little bit about that. And 
I don't want to recap the entire newsletter or read it or anything like that. Um, but it was called like the fear of finishing. Right. And it kicked off because um, artist um, at Keith comic artist at Keith underscore comic artist on Instagram wrote me and said like a long, a pretty longer message, but he basically said like, do you ever get to the end of a project about four pages away even, and you just feel stuck or you start second guessing all of your choices. And he just wanted to know if it was just him or, you know, was he going crazy? <clears throat> and my, my response was, no, it's not you. It's, it's all of us. We all do that. And especially I do that. And it just made me kind of, it just immediately was like, that's the topic for the week. I got to write about this. I got to write out what I was feeling. And, um, <clears throat> it made me examine um, my own fear of uh, my own fear of finishing things and why I have a lot of unfinished projects. I don't want to get too much into it, <laughs> but um, it bothers me. It bothers me that I have a lot of things that I started and didn't finish. Um, I talk about that in the newsletter, but I really started to examine really deep down the reasons uh, why that is. And when it, for me, it was like, I think beyond all the excuses that I made, it was just like, if I don't finish it, then I'll never fail at it. It's always almost there, right? So I'm never going to finish it and I won't fail. So it wasn't the fear of failure. Really, it was the fear of, fa fear of failure. But before the fear of failure is the fear of finishing something. Um, then you just kind of do that. I think, and I had some conversations with other artists about this too, where you just kind of start to guess like, or, or ask yourself, dude, does anyone really want this thing that I'm putting all this work and time into? Um, and the idea came about, about self-awareness and how do I overcome that now? And how do I actually tell other artists to, to, to tackle that? And it sounds a little crazy, but you can basically just kind of start having a conversation with yourself and saying like that little voice, I had this little back and forth in the newsletter that said, you know, the little voice will say like, Oh man, you suck. And then you just kind of go, yeah, I do suck. And I, and then you quit or you stop. But instead you got to talk back to that voice and say, um, why do I suck? And the voice says, Hey bro, you can't draw horses. Right. And then you're like, hey, you're right. I can't draw horses. I quit. No, you got to say, well, what if we learn to draw horses? Uh, bad friend voice in my head kind of thing. And the more you talk back to that voice, the less that voice shows up. So if you're always just having that little voice inside that's saying doubting you or whatever around you, just start talking back to it. And I think it kind of just goes away um, after a time. And that's, uh, that's kind of how I, what do you think about that? It's crazy, right? No, Talking because I can't draw and I'm not an artist, um, but I, I definitely am an all or nothing kind of person. I think the nothing times come out of fear. So I think it, it kind of transcends the art community. I don't, I don't think it's, I think being able to recognize that's what you're doing Um is really helpful to overcoming it. But I, I don't know that everybody has the self-awareness to realize the why behind the not finishing. Yeah. And it's definitely not perfect either. Like I'll find myself slipping back into it where I'm working on a project right now. Um, I make excuses and say like, Oh, there's this other, you know, I can't, I can't finish this because I got X, Y, Z to do, you know, um, Rocky says, if you've never read the book, Be a Coffee Bean, you should. You are truly a coffee bean, DJ. I don't know what that means, but I love coffee, so <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> I will. I'll, I'll check it out. Check that out. Um, yeah, so, I mean, that's uh, the, the thing about that newsletter in particular was that I think within five minutes of it being up, definitely within the first hour, I was getting messages back and DMs and, and uh, direct emails saying like, Oh my God, thank you so much for, you know, this week's um, topic. Um, and uh, let's see here. What am I doing? All right. 
Oh, no. Okay. Never mind me. I'm just in here crawling while I'm talking. Um, that, uh, hold on, guys. Boy, if Rich Cumter were on here, he'd really be grilling me about my layer, my layer naming. <laughs> so don't worry about it. Never mind that, guys. Um, what was I saying? All right. I was just thinking about renaming all of the layers. In the no, don't, don't. Yeah. He used to really, every time I would do live drawing before, he would say like, DJ, you got to work on your, your layer naming there. But let's not worry about that. It's not that important. Um, yeah. So I got a lot of feedback from uh, that newsletter and it just felt really good. And it made me actually sit and again, kind of examine like, what's my next project? You know, I just finished up, uh, a children's book project. And I kind of used that as an excuse to not work on some other stuff that wasn't unfinished, that was unfinished. I was like, well, now I got this children's book to do. So I guess I'll wait because, you know, that's a paying thing. And I can just wait to think about those other things that I got kind of, uh, uh, you know, hanging on. So um, yeah, there's that, that constant kind of, uh, dialogue that goes on in your head yep. yeah will's random artwork says the helsinki bus station theory changes his perspective on his creative journey have you ever heard of the helsinki bus station theory i don't know what that is okay well i'm looking it up okay she's gonna look it up and then we'll talk about it live <laughs> never heard about it yeah um yeah so i think Again, I just I have a lot of gratitude for the the other artists that reach out to me, and I think it's this two way street. Um, Tom, I see that you're listening in, and again, it was just like you need that support structure around you. Um, we don't usually get it around us as artists a lot, whether it's uh, you know people just thinking what we do is just a dream or something like that, um, or a, you know, hobby especially if you're trying to pursue it as a career. Um, you definitely need a good support structure around you. And that's kind of the spirit um, in the uh, Draw or Die Club. Let's see here. Dan says he doesn't like to post anything unless he thinks it looks good. So he rarely posts. So Dan, like the funny thing about that is, have you ever, have any of you guys out there ever thought, wow, this drawing sucks or this panel sucks in my comic. And then you post it anyways. And the thing that you thought sucked, everybody loved it. It's the one thing that you didn't like and it's what really resonated. So it's almost like that, that idea of like, you never know what's going to hit. Like your own personal opinions might be blocking you from, from things. Right. Um, Oh, there's Barry. Look at that. Hey, Barry. How's it going? I'm not supposed to look at the comments yet. I'm not, she's supposed to be telling me who's in there. So. Well, there's a, there's a lot of them, so I can't read all of them. But, okay. Uh, or it would just be me. Um, Barry said that he's fighting through. Um, he had a little bit of a rough time on the last two prompts. I think I think we're winding down. You know, people are... Yeah. yeah. And Barry was late i think getting into it and he caught up with all those awesome sketch cards um so amazing job getting back to that and i mentioned barry in the newsletter too i think there about how he's dealing with you know some injury to his hand and like it's physically painful for him to draw <laughs> sometimes so like your dedication to you know needing to do it like the whole spirit of draw or die really is you know barry you could be a poster child for uh for draw or die for sure which reminds me we should probably do some more like live drawing together at some point here yeah are there any other questions or anything in there it's been mm, not really okay Combo's drawing board said, we all think we are out on an island by ourselves, but truly we are all in the same boat. Okay. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I did get 
a question. Um, you know, it's a pretty, I don't want to say it's a basic question, but uh, what tools do I use <laughs> to want to draw with, or do I, do I prefer digital or, um, Someone right. did mention they really like your black wing pencil in Procreate. Oh, the Procreate brush. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I imagine it's the natural, the natural brush thing. Yeah. yeah that's a good one. Like, yeah, I think that's my preferred um, method right now is this digital on you know, iPad um, with the uh, custom brushes, just cause I've kind of, tweak them out to kind of feel like even this one, I don't know if you can go bigger on this. Can you switch the screen to be a full size? So this brush that I'm using now, I don't know if it's visible, but I call this the old school inker and like it has really great, like, you know, it feels like I'm, I'm painting with like a cool brush. I just like that feel of that. So I call this the old school inker brush. Um, yeah, so I mean, I don't know. That's that's one of the, that's kind of a base. I don't want to say, again, I don't want to insult anybody by saying that's a basic question, but the tools really don't matter. It's just learning to, to use them, uh, whatever you're using. You don't need to have a fancy drawing board and you don't need to have fancy pencils either. You just kind of learn to use what you got. And that's kind of the fun, the fun part of it. Right. This character here that I'm drawing for the, it's like a jester kind of guy was sort of a version of this character that we did in the nineties called Whiteface when I was like six, I don't know, 18, 16, 18 for a couple writer friends that it was basically like a, a jester vigilante. And it was right around the time of like, yeah, the crow was out and stuff like that. And he had face makeup, and I would always tell the guys, "Well, he looks like the crow with his face makeup." But I guess his something with his face makeup was like this classic gesture from some old painting. So they were like, "It was, it was around before the crow." And I'm like, "Well, it kind of looks like the crow." So this is white face. It was a very violent, very violent comic. <laughs> Jim was wondering if you use Procre Procreate for your digital work. I do. So that's what I'm in now. Let me can see here real quick. Just take a look. So I have all the, this is all, the, all of my October prompt over prompts right in here. And I just kind of have the ones coming up for tomorrow. Just kind of have them in there like that waiting for me. And yeah. Kind of forgot to post this one today, so it kind of worked out that I'm going to ink it up here real fast and do that. Cool. Let's see. And again, we have the, for anyone that's maybe watching that doesn't know, what the draw or die club is essentially the core of it is a weekly newsletter at uh draw or die dot club that comes out every sunday at noon and we kind of tackle different topics like lately it's been a lot of talking about this promptober thing um but also the fear of you know finishing uh, stuff about how to support artists, how to kind of encourage yourself, get yourself unstuck, motivated. Um, let's see here. So definitely ch check that out. It's free to do. And we've had a lot of artists asking like, what do we do after Promptober's over? Like we still have uh, daily drawing prompts after that. We, we did it before. There wasn't a whole lot of people doing it then, but we'd have the uh, daily drawing prompts too. That come out but there's a weekly drawing prompt for free the daily ones are about like five bucks a month um and they're kind of designed to to stretch your uh, visual storytelling and imagination sean said the talk about self-doubt really hit home for him and he said thanks yeah 
Yeah, I think, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, it's, what is it just a human condition, but it's, I, I think it's especially hard for creative minds, you know, musicians and artists. Um, it's not an easy, it's not an easy career path, you know, and it's, it's also not an easy passion to have when you're at a day job, you know, I still, I have my day job and, um, I enjoy what I do at, at work, but I never thought I would have a day job again. I did this for 13 years full time, but man, it's, it can be stressful to uh, chase down money and Will's random artwork was wondering if you have advice for someone who is trying to push forward into art as a career. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it would depend on like what type of art you're trying to do. Um, But, and this is going to be an upcoming uh, newsletter topic actually is that there are no barriers anymore. So these perceived gatekeepers that we have, Um, you know, maybe the gatekeepers now are these platforms (laughs) like YouTube and Instagram and meta, but really the gatekeepers are gone. It's all on you to, to do it and build your audience. And there's really no limitation except for your time and staying encouraged. Um, so if it's animation or storyboards, I think there's a, um, there's a guy named Rad, Rad Seacrest on Instagram who was an animator for like DreamWorks. And he recently like launched his own little animation school. They, a lot of the animators got, I guess, fired or something. I'm, I'm probably getting this story a little bit wrong right now. But, but he put up a post saying like, hey, we can do these animations ourselves now on TikTok or whatever. And a lot of them are like animatics. And they're really kind of killing it um, themselves. Monetizing their audiences in different ways. Um, Subspace, who is also uh, Magical Creatures on Instagram, wondered what we should do after Promptober's over. And they are thinking about circling back and revisiting some of their sketches and making finished pieces out of them. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. that's a really good idea. And maybe that's what we should do is like a project together with the group is just to say like, right. We talked about that. We We, have, you know, it's a slippery slope when in the past, other challenges might've used other people's art for their own gain. So I think we would have to do something that was, what do you mean? Like monetizing your Yeah, like art? if you put yeah. a book together then and you're the one publishing the book, the publisher always gets an unfair advantage over the individual artists. Okay. But we know that without the artists, it would have never happened. So how do you do a product, you know, on behalf of everyone? You know, do you pay for the art outright? And then, oh yeah, and, you know, how, how would someone do that? Or maybe it's just digital and nobody's monetizing it. So you don't have to worry about that. Yeah. A couple ideas that we had. I mean, I'm talking about individual artists. What do you do after this? I would, con- <laughs> I'm going to tell every single artist just to keep drawing every day. Um, whether it's my prompts or, or just kicking off your own imagination. But one of the things that I looked at with all these awesome drawings that we had two things really, um, <clears throat> for my own stuff, looking back through some of these sketches and going like, Ooh, which one of these could be like cool stickers or something, something that's kind of low risk that would just be kind of cool to give out or, you know, sell in a small pack or something at a show. Um, the artwork's already done basically on some of these live streams, you know, I'm going to go back and um, <clears throat> probably ink some of the ones I didn't have time to do. Like I thought about, well, I really like my headless horseman. You should do the robot. Which one? Where's the robot at? It's in red. Oh yeah, the road. Yeah, the red robot. Yeah, people like that one too. <clears throat> so I don't know if it might be a mini print or something like that. I wouldn't even think to, you know, to monetize it. But we have had some people ask, um, 
if I would sell these, I can't really sell them because they're digital. Um, but it's a possibility for like a small sketchbook. I mean, think about it. Everybody that did 31 uh, drawings, you have the capability to make a little mini comic out of them. Um, <clears throat> so that was one of the ideas was like to kind of go back and look at what you did, make, maybe make some t-shirt designs or something like that, even if just for yourself. And then one of the things we might do, and I don't know if we're going to commit to it or not, is reach out to some of all of you um, and ask like, hey, do you want to get together and maybe put together like a like a group sketchbook of some kind um, that we put out as like a volume one or something like that, just with some of the best of Promptober um, or the best of the Draw or Die Club. We don't even have to call it Promptober. Um, <clears throat> so we might see who's interested in that. Um, we don't like to, we don't want people to work, uh, for free. Um, so we'll have to figure that out and see what kind of budget we have for, for doing that sort of thing. We also don't like Kickstarters. We don't, I mean, it would have to be the or anything perfect like situation to kickstart. Something. Yeah. So by the way here, I don't know what's going on with this drawing, but it's sort of the idea that he just smashed someone's head. I think it reminds pretty... me of Gallagher. Gallagher. All right. Yeah. You know what? This isn't a tooth anymore. It's going to be a, a, a watermelon seed. <laughs> going to get in there. Second. Uh, Barry says perhaps a thirty-day comic book challenge. Oh. You've never done the the twenty-four hour comic book challenge. I always think you might <clears throat> do it, but you never do. No. Barry could do it because he's a machine. He can just draw comics in his sleep. I think, but. Um, <laughs> he says as an old dude he can't do 24 hour comic anymore but a page a day he could do yeah can we do 3 hour comic page <laughs> <laughs> can we just draw like normal people? can we just draw like yeah <laughs> uh, yeah again Barry's like a machine I, everybody that knows Barry's like wow he's just churning out this stuff for years and uh, really fun Really fun stuff. We had a group here in Pittsburgh um, for a brief moment in time called Seven by Seven. And it was seven, you know, seven comic book artists from Pittsburgh. I guess we're all kind of a little bit obscure guys, you know, maybe not as well known on the uh, national stage or anything like that. And it was just nice to kind of get back together and uh, publish one comic. Oh, what's going on with my pen here? Um. Yeah. A four panel comic four every panel. day of the week. Yeah, four panel comic every week. Well, there was one from each of us. One you. from each of us, yeah. Right. And then I think we got a little crazy because I was like, I'm doing it three days a week now. And then Barry's like, you I'm going daily. And <laughs> yeah, I tend to uh I've I've really tried to stop myself from uh uh going nuts because you know, Alicia will tell you too, that I sit around in a dream. You know, one of my daydreams is like daily comic strips. I, I love the daily, um, the daily format. And again, probably a topic, I think it's a topic that I kind of brought up before um, in the newsletter, the whole idea of why are you worrying about an 80 page graphic novel that you're never going to finish when you can start your four panel uh, comic strips um, and kind of go back to the old school days of uh, adventure comics and things like that. I really, I really dig that, but it's also a lot of work. And again, I don't want to start something that I'm not going to finish or, and that's the thing about daily comic strips is they feel like they never, they never end. Um, which is, again, that's interesting, isn't it? Like when we talk about fear of finishing, maybe that's why my, my, I think that's one criticism you have about my own stories, right? You're like, I don't know what's going on here, but this is never going to end. And I'm like, yeah, you time jump. I so time much. jump. Yeah. So it, it all makes sense in my own head, but, uh, I don't really plot out. <clears throat> Sean you know. says being overly ambitious is a precursor to self-doubt i know this firsthand and it's a beast of negative feedback loop okay yeah. yep 
yeah, I try. I, I've done a much better job this past year, for sure, of not jumping in too, too deep on something that I can't do. Even these drawing prompts, you know, I really enjoy them because it's something that's I can do in like you know ten minutes, fifteen minutes. Um, mess around with some prompts, or mess around with some brushes, um, and things like that, and it feels less pressure, but it also does make me want to like tell stories more um, in some form or fashion. So just messing around with this gouache brush here. Okay. And it's, it's also like, again, like uh, my personal <laughs> on the personal side of having, you know, day job work. I think the month of October was the worst time for me to be doing any kind of um, <laughs> drawing challenge. I was in California for a little bit for work uh, at a bid summit. And then we tacked on a personal vacation, went to Disneyland and kind of enjoyed that. And just as, just as October was kicking off, went to go see my dad up in California and uh, up in the desert. And, um, and then I got back and I was like, Oh no, now it's two weeks of workshops at the day job. So really these prompts at night or, you know, five o'clock in the morning when I was finishing up the children's book, these prompts were just like a nice refreshing, um, a nice refreshing thing to do that wasn't tied to anything. Like I didn't feel like it mattered much. I did want to get my drawings up and make sure that I finished the month and then keep encouraging the other artists out there to keep going. So I tried to comment as much as I could but I had no idea that there'd be so many. Um, <laughs> I had no idea that there'd be so many drawings out there. So that's, again, pretty amazing. So awesome. Little highlights there. So yeah, uh, Alicia, did you want to do some sort of giveaway or something like that? Like for the merch yeah, shop? Yeah, we can do a giveaway. I don't know yeah. how, how do we give. I don't know. We didn't think about this. Uh, the first person to tell me in the chat who other than them, who other than themselves they like best out of the people posting hashtag draw die club prompt over sketches. I'll send you a t shirt. Okay. Did that make any sense? I think so. If you, you just say, can't say yourself, don't who, say yourself, don't your say yourself, person? don't say me. But yeah, can't be DJ. Yeah. Um, so the first person to comment, who's who else favorite art is? Oh, it's Dan. Dan named okay. magical creatures. Does he count? Because we're already sending him something. We're not sending Dan anything. Oh, Dan. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because well, now yeah. we are. Well, now Dan. we're sending you something, Dan. Yeah. Okay. So Dan, <laughs> uh, congratulations. And we have two different versions of the T-shirt. <laughs> Uh, which DJ thought was unnecessary, but yeah. I don't think everyone can wear the word damn on their shirt. Um, I don't know. I, yeah. It's still a swear. kind of. It's good. Um, but um, let me know in the comments your t-shirt size and whether you want the one that says draw every day or draw every damn day. Okay. I don't know what marmalade farts is, but is that a, is that a name of an artist? I bet. All right. Okay. <laughs> that won't make any that won't make any sense if it's just audio. If someone's listening. It will. It will? All right. Well, they, yeah. Okay. Now I need to look up marmalade parts. All right. It's a trick. Specifically Sean's trick. Sean's tricking us. There's no marmalade farts. He just wants us to say that out loud. Um yeah, cool. I said I had another question that came. Oh no, I did the question about the tools thing. Um, yeah, Tom talked about about discipline and drawing every day. Really, like um, again, talked about that in the newsletter. But yeah, that's a, that's something that if you don't draw even something a little bit every day, you start to like fall off a little bit, and uh, it can, you know, it's just like that. I say it a lot recently is the whole idea of an object at rest stays at rest. The more you don't draw, the more you don't draw. 
Like that's kind of how it feels to me. Even, you know, to be quite honest, um, this week when I turned in the children's book, final files, I had an evening where I didn't really do anything except for the prompt. And I did feel a little bit lazy, but then the next day I'm like, Oh yeah, I feel a little lazy. I don't think I'm going to like my, my big project's done for the month or nine, you know, working on that for nine weeks. And I was really just kind of like taking it in and being like, Oh, cool. It's done. And thinking about all these things that we should do podcast, a couple other projects that are on the horizon. And uh, it was Alicia that said like, let's just do it. Let's just get, let's just get down and do it. Was it yesterday you said this? No, or the day before? Wednesday. No, Tuesday. Tuesday, she said, we're doing a podcast on Thursday. And I was like, what? And she's like, if you don't schedule it and do it, you're not going to do it. And I'm like, you know what? You're right. What else am I going to do on Thursday night except for sit and watch, you know? We would have went to Fred Murphy's. Yeah, we would have went out for pizza or something like that. Or or I think the new... uh Star Wars shows out on Thursdays or something like that, but you got to watch your, you got to watch that. Cause if you fall into doing it before you know it, you're just kind of lazy and feeling miserable again. Like, um, and again, not to get, I don't get too um, dark and morbid about it, but the time, especially as I get older, um, I just go like, man, I wasted so much time. Uh, you know, binge watching that show. I could have finished the comic I was working on. It would have been done. Um, you start to sit around and beat yourself up over that. This is about the time that I would probably, I'm going to zoom in on that a little bit there. William says doing this has helped him get more comfortable with drawing on his iPad. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, I would say, one of the tricks I use for my iPad is I got one of those matte finish screen guards, not the paper like. I don't like that one. Um, <clears throat> but the Tech Armor, I think, is the one that I use. And it just has a nice, you can't see what I'm doing here, but it has a nice matte finish to it. And, and the, the, the Apple Pencil kind of um, glides over it and kind of feels like Bristol, smooth Bristol board to me. So that's kind of why I like it as a... As a thing, so this is probably where I would stop the uh, the drawing. I could keep noodling with this one, um, but I'm gonna call it finished. I'm gonna call this one done. I think I'm just gonna sign this one real quick for the record. I probably forgot to sign some of them. All right. Terry says if you draw on your phone, you can watch TV while you draw. Yeah. Yeah. I do do that a lot too. I mean, if, if it's, especially if it's like the, I call it the mindless work I can do, you know, inking or coloring, especially um, I can do uh, uh, some, some of that mindless work while I'm watching something or watching hell's kitchen or yeah. It's not like I'm this like Buddhist monk that's never, <laughs> you know, never enjoying my life. Uh, I definitely, um, definitely watch some shows and I got to keep up on it. You know, I kind of fill my, I, I, I don't tell people don't consume other people's art. Cause that is someone else's art. I try to like look at it and absorb it and kind of help it or kind of energize myself with my ideas and things like that, but without being encouraged by it, just kind of, I don't know. I'm watching shows in a whole other way. I think I'm like, Oh, this look at the cinematographer did with this scene or the lighting in this is awesome. Or, you know, that's kind of why I liked uh, Breaking Bad was always awesome for that. I'm kind of just learning while I'm watching something, too. Um, I really like this one. It's a good one. This little tiny axe there. All right, cool. What are we at, an hour now? A little over an hour. A little over an hour. That's not bad. It's great. Should we just keep going? Should I just keep going and talking? If this were the end of a podcast, I would say this is the end and that we might. <laughs> but uh, I think maybe we stick to the schedule of uh, Thursday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern. Let's just stick it to the schedule and try to do it as much as often as possible. 
Um, also, we'll do a live. Uh, I think we'll just go on live and figure out how to do those prize drawings for Promptober live on this. Yep. So we'll do the little randomizer and kind of give away the prizes. We'll talk about that this weekend on Sunday's newsletter. Um, and uh, let's see. Go back to my... I got to get this pr prompt posted before the end of the day. Um, yeah, that's about it. So thanks so much, guys, for for watching in and spending an hour here. I'm going to actually go work on some other stuff. And I want you all to stay encouraged out there. And, you know, if you're feeling stuck, if you're listening to this and you're kind of feeling stuck out there, and you need someone to just vent to or something like that, you can send us a DM, send us an email. Uh, we might not have all the answers for you, but we might be able to point you in the right direction or just kind of, sometimes it's just good to have someone listen. Well, we right? forgot about the oh. host. Oh, uh, she wants me to BJ come up. needs a, a yeah. co-host. Uh, yeah. I think it should probably be someone from the Dry or Die Club. Okay. Yeah, so if you want to be on the show in the future, maybe you're drawing live or something like that, we can help you out with that. Um, yeah, how do, you, how do they get in touch with us? Maybe to you. Um, you can email me, uh, Allie, A-L-L-Y, at drawordieclub.com. Um, or if you wanted to email DJ, you could email him, uh, DJ at drawordieclub.com. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that's cool. Maybe I, we haven't quite figured this out exactly yet, but I know how to use it and we can, we can do some live drawing together and maybe it's not a, you know, an official podcast version. Maybe we'll just jump on and do some live drawing together, uh, or work on some deep work with a longer stream. So, uh, but for now, I hope that everybody, uh, stays encouraged out there and thanks for listening in and everybody. Don't stop drawing. Get back to the drawing board. And that's what I'm going to go do as well. So do we have outro music? <laughs> outro music. How do we do that? It's very demanding. Okay. We're going to do acoustic cinematic. All right. Acoustic cinematic. There it is. Maybe. Maybe. All right. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> this has been the Draw or Die <laughs> <laughs> podcast number one we promise that it will get better as we go stay encouraged out there guys I'm still here I'm just messing around <laughs> alright we'll see you guys soon like I'm still here. Still here. I'm not going anywhere. I'm just going to secretly draw with this. I know. It's the Marvel credits. Oh, look. There's my son. Dylan's in here. You think we're gone, but then we're going to come back with like a nice... It's not an encore. It's not an encore. We're going to come back with a secret character. Secret project. No? All right. All right, everybody. Good night. shaking her head at me. She said, don't do it again. All right, I'm going to click. All right, end of broadcast.